How's it going guys? So today's August the 14th. One thing I was trying to work out while we're not milking is actually both of the bottom gates in our milking parlor were giving some trouble. This one I got a brand new cylinder for. Can reach the switch from the parlor. For some reason it closes really slowly. I adjusted it so it can move as fast as possible and it's still pretty slow. These gates are all controlled from down in the parlor. You can just reach up and turn this pipe wherever you're standing close the gate so that one's good to go now this side over here this cylinder we thought was the issue replaced uh, some seals in it that didn't fix the problem yeah basically we just have pressure coming in this side and this valve just go up and down and switch the pressure to the opposite direction of these two hoses so it pushes the cylinder in and out so first thing i'm going to do this morning is i'm going to put this new valve on so I turn the pressure off in the system so yeah what's happening right now whenever we flip this lever down it just leaks air out of this top it's like a pressure release it's not supposed to let air out constantly first they were thinking that the seal was out in the middle of the cylinder the air is passing through or something but I don't think that's the problem I got this switched on, didn't tighten everything down yet, but air's on, Let's see what happens. Okay, so the new valve does exactly the same thing as the old one. You just have a valve, you have hoses, and you have a cylinder. I put the old valve back on. I noticed at this end, for whatever reason, they had this hose plumbed in. There was a three-way right there and it was passing air across to the other side right here and so I think it was circulating pressure both ways I just cannot figure out why they had that set up we had it like that for 20 years and it worked and then it stopped working but I thought let me just stop that it doesn't seem like it needs to be there so I just direct line plumbed it in now I have the pressure on and it doesn't leak it's acting normal Well, that made a difference. These right here will slow the air down, passing through. Yeah, we'll speed it up just a touch. It's confusing, but I'm happy to see this all working now. Appears to be working properly. So, I'm glad to have those gates working. They say you either got to be smart or you got to be persistent. So I'm trying to work on my persistence a little bit with certain things. And we're learning. This week, Laley Center Mid-Atlantic is back working on these robots again, getting them set up. They're attaching all the strips to the ground out there and installing boxes and everything. There's a truckload of hay coming early afternoon, so I'm going to have to unload that in a little bit. Work the best. Yeah. The best with everything because it's turned. So is it following right now? It's, it's just fo following the strip? Yeah, following yeah. the strip. So it'll go up to that junction point up there and stop. That's how it, when you're programming the route, that's what it'll normally do. It'll stop because it's got that break in the strip. Yeah. So it says I'm at the end of the strip. So at this point, if we're programming, we can tell it that to turn right to go up and follow this strip or yeah. go straight, depending on which way. Okay. This is the first time that he had it driven up through. He wants to check and see how it's going to work out there towards the end of the barn before they set too many strips. So he has it in test mode right now. It's just following that metal strip on its own. 
not taking them too long. They're just fastening these to the concrete. We had talked about trying to get these strips seated into the concrete, like lay them in when we're pouring it. There's some challenges with that. So they're just gonna be fastened on top. We're, we're probably gonna look to get some sort of brush that we can, like a power brush for the skid loader that we can angle to clean these pathways easily because you can't really take a skid loader bucket and scrape across that. Well, it's good to see that it can drive over our road that we made. See the side difference compared to the feed pusher. It's quite a difference. We've had this feed pusher in here for almost seven years now. He was just talking about some options on how we can set the route up. And then once it gets in the side of the barn, it sort of works like the feed pusher did. This the ultrasound is reading off the headlocks right now, so you can set whatever distance you want it to run. I don't have this thing cleaned up and all pretty for you guys, but this is the reality. I'm going to try to keep the vectors a little cleaner though. We were talking about how we're going to cross over the middle of the barn once we get to that point with the mixing feeding robot. It would be a little bit different than this feed pusher is. We have garage doors on the barns. These are open right now for the summer, but in the winter we definitely want them closed. The mixing feeding robot will be able to open and close doors. It's got switches on it. Hey guys, so it's the next day here, and I have Caleb here. He had helped me the other day with some of those conveyors. We're gonna go to the other farm where we had our heifers, and we're gonna take the one conveyor from there as well. We made it down here. So this conveyor, we just put in a couple years ago. Uh, we used to feed out of the silos, and then we had reduced our amount of head at this farm, so we were just hauling feed down and just running out of our mixer. Yeah, it was sort of a temporary setup running this conveyor through the doorway. We're gonna dismantle this now, get it out of the way so the neighbors can use their doorway properly and we can make use of this conveyor. We've got five different sections. We're just gonna take it apart. So first thing we gotta do is get our covers off. This was just to keep the snow out of it. And then we'll take this chain off. Works pretty good for this. That went pretty smoothly. Got some stuff we're taking home and then the five sections. I'm glad we bought this conveyor and have it now because we're going to be able to use it for the robot setup. We got all of our good conveyors. 
I want to clean these up a little bit at some point before we get them hung up. We actually made a little change to the way that the robots are going to park in the feed room. So this is going to be the new setup. The charging station, instead of being angled, it's actually just straight ahead here. And they have two different lanes. When a mixer is done loading feed down there, it'll turn around and drive out right here. And then when it's gone delivering feed, this mixer will switch over to the loading station. When that first mixer is headed back, it'll just come in this other route straight into its charger. So this right here is the decision point. When it gets to a spot with no strip, it'll stop. Depending on which route it's programmed to go to, this way it'll go to the heifer barn, dry cow barn, or that way up to the milking cows. Hey guys, so it's the next day now, and I'm gonna go up in this silo. We'll move the unload down the door, and I'll take the grease gun along. I don't need to grease it that often, but it's due for greasing now. So we have this camera up in our silo. You can tell when there's enough space to drop the unloader down a door there. We don't have to switch the door that often. It's about every two weeks or so now. It's going to be less and less often as we get lower in the silo where it's more packed. Most of the rungs aren't too bad, but you do get a few like that up through. We'll climb up to the feed level. It's about halfway up. I made it up to the open door. So now I'm gonna open up this next door. We can climb inside that way. It's actually low enough we could open even the next door to get in. That would be pretty smart. My hope when we put these silos in was that we could skip a door when we lower it to be able to drop it the whole way down two doors at one time so we don't have to climb as often. Uh, we're kind of finding with this setup we can't really do that. If I'm getting my terms correct, this is the control arm. It's what actually sits on top of the door there. And that kind of gives the unloader a steady spot to kind of push against when it's spinning around the silo. Because it's just suspended on these cables besides that. So, you know, as it's pushing it can kind of twist. That keeps everything straight. The other option on these unloaders is to put a cable, a chain on the cable here and then you every time you chain it out onto the door that's what it holds on to and then you can have the gooseneck just on a chain rather than being mounted to this big metal piece the advantage with the chain type is you can skip a door easier but the downside is you don't have as much stability Jeff's farm service is the dealer for these yellow jacket unloaders he really prefers the control arm just said it's better for the unloader everything stays straighter the nice thing is there is some leeway you don't have to change it as soon as it's low enough to change you have a couple foot of leeway there so I could have already changed the door a couple days ago and I could wait a couple more days to change it and the unloader would still work the nice thing is I can do the job when I want to it's not like I have to be watching it like a hulk and then switching the door on a certain day it's really not a big deal I don't mind climbing up in the silo moving the door down what I don't like is having too many breakdowns in the silo and climbing up to fix things that's what we're going to try to avoid for sure I think with good maintenance and making sure we're checking over stuff when the unloader's down on the ground it's gonna help prevent too many problems. I'm just gonna clean everything up a little bit and then there's a couple grease fittings that we'll hit with some grease. But the first thing that's good to do before you start messing with stuff is just turn off the unloader. There's a switch up here. That way no one can turn it on if we're gonna work on it. So we fed down a good ways now so we're getting into more packed feed. It's really solid in here. Really happy with the feed coming out of the silo. It's stable. It's not heating on us. Smells good. It will be interesting to see how the unloader performs as we get down farther into the really packed feed. So these bearings are probably the most important to grease because you got that fan spinning in there really quickly throwing the feed out the gooseneck. So there's one of those on both sides and then there's a couple up on the collector ring. This all rotates because it's where the power transfers from the, the fixed part of the unloader to the spinning part down here. The last thing then is just to drop this down to the next door. I'll get back in the chute and I'll close that door right away. Just like to close them up so that way it's ready to fill next year. I don't have to worry about closing all the doors up.
we were running a little bit low on corn silage going into this summer, so we've been feeding more triticale than we can at this pace all year. So we figured it won't hurt during the summer to use it up plenty quickly. It's good digestible forage. It's good for summer heat. And then once we get to winter, we can slow down a little bit and not feed as much out of the silo. So for the most part, this shoot is not bad. There's no updraft today. If you have a breeze blowing up through, that makes it a little less fun. Gonna take a little bit of time to pressure wash these conveyors so that they're ready to go for next week. This is the one from the other farm we brought up yesterday. It's not all that dirty, but might as well clean it up. So I counted it out, we have about 82 feet worth of conveyor we can use. Shouldn't need to buy too much more, gonna have to get some parts, but I'm hoping next week we can start tearing walls apart, hanging conveyors up. So we'll see, that might be the next video. My dad's getting home from Alaska here late tonight, so it'll be good to have him back. It's been two weeks with him being away. Okay guys, thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one.